So Amy, let's talk dysbiosis. Where would you like to begin, my friend? Maybe to start, we can talk a little bit about the difference between like kind of pathogenic dysbiosis versus mm-hmm. like um, imbalance. Cause I think, or again, like there's, it can be potentially pathogenic, but do, do you get yeah. what I'm saying? Like almost like opportunistic yeah, pathogens. Flavors. Yeah, the different yep. flavors of, of what dysbiosis means. But I would say, to kind of start us off, the way that I generally explain dysbiosis to people as a primer is that it's basically an imbalance between the good and the bad stuff in an ecosystem. So for the purposes of our conversation, we're going to be talking about the gut, but just know that you can have dysbiosis in the vaginal tract, in your sinuses, in your lungs, in the small intestine. Yeah, it's not like an outright pathogen where in any capacity in a small amount it's going to create a lot of problems and you don't necessarily want it there in any in any capacity you don't want salmonella to show up on your stool test in any capacity um but i think that i really like how you're how you're explaining it it is an imbalance of some sort the ways that i typically explain it is a you could think of like those good bacteria and even the neutral bacteria the ones that are particularly good but they're not particularly bad either like you could think of those as like your army they're your troops and they're going to help you crowd out or compete with the bad guys and make it much harder for them to shack up in your gut we can try to kill the bad stuff from now until doomsday but you don't want to do that all day for the rest of your life right like you want to have checks and balances in place to make sure that the bad guys never get out of control or make sure that your motility never goes out of control. And for the dysbiosis piece of the puzzle, you need to have the good guys around so that they can do the heavy lifting for you. You just get your good guys on board and then they're gonna take care of your bad guys for you. And we don't have to be as conscious about that eradication phase because they're gonna be doing the heavy lifting for you. Okay, if the good gut bugs are low, would bringing them up and doing strategies to bring them up take care of the dysbiosis somewhat in some capacity, kind of clean up the dysbiosis in general? And I think like from my standpoint, I usually go from like the conservative but also still powerful approaches first. So, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to manipulate the environment so that good gut bugs are growing and really trying to foster the good gut bugs and foster immune function like your your you're pointing to and see how you're feeling um because i do think sometimes the conservative approaches work on their own and you don't necessarily need to do a strong cleanup just depending on the case it's not every single case can oh yeah can avoid doing any even just focusing on growing the the good gut bugs and balancing balancing out the gut by increasing good gut bugs, that part of the equation, I think can take care of a, a huge portion of of yeah. the cleanup on its own. Again, certain cases are going to need extra support, but I do think that you definitely want to make sure you're, you're, you're working on that part of the equation and not just the killing oh, part yeah. of the equation. I definitely saw positive improvement by doing kind of more rebuilding approach and Mm -hmm. i think that like it's just important to note and i think you were you were making you were making this statement by what you just said like there are people too that just like aren't necessarily responsive to herbals at all um and they need to do more of the rebuilding and repair um i think everyone even if you're doing clearing and it is working needs to do some level of rebuilding and repair. Yeah. But I do think that there is people that aren't even responsive to the hyper aggressive approaches for dysbiosis and imbalance in the large intestines. It really is a case by case thing yeah. from my from my standpoint. This is where stool testing is totally imperfect for numerous yeah. reasons. Like stool testing does not accurately reflect the ecosystem in the rectum, the colon, the small intestine, the stomach. So that's important to know. When they've compared like aspirate studies, stool testing is not super reflective of what's going on inside. Um, and yeah, and dysbiosis is definitely a big, big rabbit hole. I feel like we could fall down this 
rabbit hole for even longer. And I just think the main thing is to consider the good microbes. I think that's a really key takeaway, not just the bad microbes, Yeah, uh, which we talked about earlier. I think everyone's kind of looking for the bad. I think we all have a negativity bias in general. So yeah. we're all looking for the bad stuff, but you also want to make sure you have enough of the good stuff and that can be equally as problematic. So that's really my closing thought. 